With this movie, our basic rigging is done on this character. And again, this is not the rigging section. In the next section, we go over some tips and tricks for putting together complex types of characters. This is really, really simple. It's, it's two shapes on its own layer. But now we're going to add some constraints to this. We've made the hip bone, the parent bone, to all the others. So the mid-back is parented to the hip bone. The shoulders are parented to the mid-back bone. And this is an excellent, excellent time to name some of the bones, and you'll see why later on. I won't name all of them. We'll do just a couple. I'll select the bone and come up here to the top and simply type in hip, hit the return key. It looks like it goes away and nothing happens, but that's okay. I'll click the mid-back bone and do mid-back, and it looks like that goes away. Over here on this side, it's the right side of this one-dimensional or two-dimensional character. So I'm going to say right shoulder, although if it was looking at me, it would actually be its left shoulder. Just trying to confuse things. How am I doing? Now one last shoulder here. And in this case, since it's the left side and we're just looking at a nondescript character, I'll go ahead and do left shoulder. And there we go. Well, it looks like nothing has changed at all, but we have the ability now with bones to come over here and select each one of those by name. There's some reasons you're going to want to do that later on, but I wanted to show this is a good time before you get into anything or adding more sophistication to your skeleton to do the basic homework of adding names to that. With the bone selection tool, keyboard shortcut B, I can select this mid-back bone here. And we have a little option right here called bone constraints. Well, why would we want to constrain those bones? Well, the obvious reason is that when I start bending a character, and let's use keyboard shortcut Z for the manipulation tool, I really don't want my character to be able to do this. Well, most of the time I would. And so what we do is we put in constraints to prevent that, and it really accelerates the animation process because you don't have extensions the wrong way, and there's some other little tips that we'll uh, work with that you can use with constraints. You may be wondering, you've got a bone rotation tool over here. How come you never use it? How come you're only using the bone manipulation tool? Very good question. So glad you asked. The manipulation tool, when you use that, the one with the keyboard shortcut Z, actually lets you bend the character that is connected to the bones because of the bone layer. The rotate tool, keyboard shortcut R, is used strictly to set up the skeleton itself. It's kind of independent of the art around it. So if I wanted to reposition the skeleton, I would use the rotate tool. Same thing for the uh, scale tool later on. But if you want to change your skeleton, and notice the other bones are behaving because we parented them to do that. If you want to change your skeleton, this is a great way to work with it. But for everything we usually do, we'll be working with the manipulate bones tool. Back to keyboard shortcut B. I'm going to select that mid-back bone. It shows up highlighted up here mid-back. We'll click on this disclosure triangle and we get a little window that pops open. Now I'm going to go ahead and right click if you're on the PC or control click if you're on the Mac and drag over our character here so we can see it. You don't need to close this window every time you work with it. You can select multiple bones and change constraints but it only works if you could see your whole character. And that's what we're doing right here. With the mid backbone selected, I'm going to click on Angle Constraints. Automatically, we see it's given us negative 70 and positive 70 degrees. If we come back over here and look in our image, we'll see that there are some red lines that come out right from where the two bones join together. This means that if I use my tools here to move it around, it won't bend beyond this line. So I know that I won't get that, that windmill effect. I may not even want it to be able to bend that far. If that's the case, I can enter a value here, or if you have a scroll wheel mouse, you can go ahead and simply roll your mouse back and forth. The value here will change in the little window, and the lines that correspond to the constraint will also change positions. Right now, it's giving me a representation of 70 degrees. If I come over here to the left side, and go ahead and roll that to something less, something like 50 degrees. We'll see that it rolls up right over here. And on the other side, if I take that to 50 degrees, we'll see that now it has come up as well. So when I grab my manipulation tool, I will not be able to bend this beyond that point. How about the shoulder? Let's select that. I'll enable constraints. We'll see it's got a range of 70 degrees. Well, you know, I don't really want this to overlap. And let me show you why on that. 
I'll come back to our motion tool here, or manipulation tool. This shape, when it starts overlapping, it looks like you can see through it. It's doing its own little compound type of, of shape removal. We looked how to make holes. This is doing the same thing. It's making a hole in the character. And while you may want that, usually it's undesirable. So with that back out, I'll come back to my bone selection tool. That's highlighted. I'll come up to constraints. And I'm going to change the constraint so I don't get that object overlap. I'll go ahead and get this one so it comes up near the head. The one down here I'll change by just rolling my, my scroll wheel on my mouse so that it lines up with the body so it won't go past that. I can confirm that now by coming back here to the manipulation tool Z. I can move that. Oh look, I can't make it go beyond that. It's going up to the head. The head is a separate shape, so we're not getting any strange uh, holes in there. But you'll notice also the shape of the head changes as we flex up there. That's because of the flexible binding versus region binding. This is where we might want to go in and start tweaking it. The mid-back now, if I grab that, we get our character bending accordingly, but not any further than it can right there. So I can go ahead and very easily now make sure that I've got some constraints to work within. I would change the influence of this area so that it doesn't affect the head. And that's how you start working with constraints in anime.